Our scripture this morning is Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. I don't see any hyphenated words this week. It tripped me up, so fingers crossed. I plead with Eudoia and I plead with Syntec to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is love, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the reading of his holy word. So today we will continue in our series discussing the things that rob us of our ability to be grateful. Now last week we talked about how nostalgia or thinking about only the past can stop us from being able to see the blessings that we have in our lives right now. Today we are going to talk about worry. And our title for our, our sermon today is What Me Worry? And I didn't know if anyone would get it, so I didn't send a picture to Todd. Um, but you'll remember that is the uh, Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine. That is his little catchphrase, what me worry. And Todd knew exactly what I was talking about. Um, so, yeah, what me worry. So we're going to talk about worrying today. In our scripture for today, Paul starts off by telling the church in Philippi that they should rejoice in the Lord always. And that they should not be anxious about anything. It's pretty easy for him to say, right? The people of that time must have been able to do this so much better than we do today. The idea of not being anxious about anything sounds like a pipe dream to us these days. How can we not be anxious? Surely if Paul were here, he would look around and instead of saying, don't be anxious about anything, Maybe just try and be a little less anxious about the things that you see today. Because when we think about the world today, and I know many of us are anxious about the things that we are seeing and experiencing, I know this because I often have conversations with people around just those topics. We look around and we, we wonder, what are we going to do about this pandemic what is going to happen to the ones that I love? I've already lost members of my family. I'm scared to lose more. Is this ever going to end? What is going on with all the violence in this world? Every day we see stories about people assaulting and killing one another over trivial things. We see wars that are going on all over the world. Do you know how many wars are currently being fought in the world? Does anyone want to venture a guess? Too many, Too many is a great answer. Right now, there are six wars being fought in the world that have had over 10,000 uh, combat-related deaths within the last year. There are an additional 17 Wars being fought that have had between 1,000 and 9,999 deaths in the last year. So 23 major conflicts being fought in the world today. In our own country in the year 2018, which is the one with the most complete data because they are still compiling data over violent deaths in the last 
uh, three years, but 2018 has been complete as far as they are concerned. There were 68,000 violent deaths in the United States. In the midst of all this pain and carnage, how are we not to worry? We have seen violence in our own small town over the past year with at least two violent deaths that have happened. And it's hitting closer to home and it's hitting more frequently. How can we not worry? What are we going to do about the inflation that we are seeing right now? How will we be able to take care of ourselves and our families? Prices are up across the board nearly 5.4%, and I believe that's probably a low estimate. But wages have only risen around 1% to 2%, and you're telling us not to worry. You see, if Paul were here today, he would change his words, right? How can we not worry? When there are so many things to worry about these days. Well, I need to tell you something, and it is this. If you are feeling that way today, if you are feeling anxious and you have worry, you need to know that it's okay. This is not going to be a sermon telling you that you are wrong if you experience worry or anxiety in your life. For me to give you a sermon telling you that feeling anxious is wrong would be the highest form of hypocrisy. Because you may or may not be aware that I suffer from anxiety myself. See, I am a gifted worrier. My brain has the ability to spin the most meaningless little thing into a giant problem. I am very good at making mountains out of molehills when it comes to anxiety. And I don't want to turn today's sermon into a therapy session for me, so I'm just going to give you all one example of how I worry. And, and it, this is indeed a small thing um, that is growing into a big thing in my life. See, I worry about being sick in public. When I was younger, I had a rough experience at a hockey game, and uh, subsequently I got sick all over the arena. Uh, and then, even worse, I got sick in my, the car of my dad's friend who was driving us to and from the game that night. I made it about 30 miles from Oklahoma City back home. I had about a block to go, and I just couldn't make it. And so I got sick all over his car. So whenever I hear about someone having the stomach bug, I have to do mental math in my head and think about how many days it's been since I've, I've seen them. And I need to know that I wasn't exposed, or if I was, that I don't have to go into public anytime soon. Now, you may have noticed this morning that um, as I've been around you, I've been masked. When we laid hands on people, I stayed a bit further back than I normally would. Um, that is because a stomach bug has gone through our house this week. Um, and so, for me, my anxiety level, where it might normally be a 2 out of 10, I am currently rocking a solid 8 out of 10 this morning. Um, being here in front of you and speaking um, was honestly in question up until last night for me. Because whenever this happens to me, this anxiety that I feel, it can be paralyzing. It makes me feel like I'm sick even if I'm not because I worry that much. In reality, in 1 out of 10 cases that I hear about someone being sick, I might actually end up getting sick. And in one in a thousand cases, I might get sick while I'm away from home. But I find myself spending hours upon hours worrying at times, and I've had to cancel plans because of that worry. Now I know that for some of you to hear that I worry about something that is so small, it seems silly to you. And when I have the ability to look at it from the outside, it seems silly to me as well. But that is how anxiety works. It makes you focus on the things that are out of your control, and it causes you to lose sight of all the things that you have to be grateful for. Indeed, one strategy that doctors have come up with for dealing with anxiety is to be grateful, to actually say out loud the things that you are grateful for. And they have found that that does decrease anxiety and worry. I encourage you all to try this, and I... I'm currently doing it in my head as well. So let's go back to Paul. He couldn't possibly understand what our anxiety is like these days. He surely would have written this verse differently if he'd have been here. 
I don't think that's true. You see, when Paul wrote this letter, he was already a prisoner, and he was waiting for a death sentence to be carried out. He had already been nearly stoned to death. He had survived a shipwreck. The people that he was writing to were experiencing persecution because of their faith. And I don't mean that people were simply saying, you're dumb because you believe in Christ. I mean, they were worried about being hauled out of their homes and killed because of their faith. And they were dealing with their families being split apart because they were choosing to believe in Christ. So you see, Paul did understand what worry was. And he would have been able to identify it with us. So then why write the words? Why tell people just to rejoice and not to be anxious? Well, that is not what Paul wrote. That is just a partial bit of what he wrote. You see, he tells us not to be anxious, but he also tells us in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, he is telling us to take those worries and those concerns and give them to God. He's telling us to take our gratitude and thanksgiving and give it to him as well. Sounds exactly like what doctors have found these days, right? Naming your things you're grateful for, taking them and giving them to God as thanks. See, he tells us that the peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds. Not the peace that the world teaches us, but the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. I'm sure you all know the song and heard it in your life, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Which, when you think about it, sounds something like this. Don't worry about anything, just ignore it and be happy. You know, often people quote the song when they hear someone worrying in their life, right? Oh, don't worry, just be happy. Well, the song is actually about how the world is wrong to ignore all the difficulties that are happening, to simply ignore them and hope that they will go away. And Paul doesn't tell us never to worry. He doesn't tell us that we should ignore the things that are happening. He tells us that we should take all those things to God, to trust in his peace, and allow him to guard our hearts and minds. So how does that play out for us today? Well, we should be praying for peace. We should be praying for our brothers and sisters that are hurting right now. And we should be doing what we can to help them. We need to make sure that we are taking the time to be grateful for all the good things that are happening in our lives as well. Focusing more on those good things than creating the what if scenarios in our lives. You see, when we do these things, when we pray, we praise, we supplicate and help, it can go a long way in our lives to help us not be anxious. My challenge for you this week is this. What is one thing that you've been worrying over? Pray and give it up to God so that he may guard you with his peace. Amen.